Hello everyone, my name is Fajar Purnama. I'm currently a master student, a second year master student at Computer Science and Electrical Engineering, Kumamoto University. I'm a member of Human Interface and Cyber Communication Laboratory from Professor Susagawa's lab. And on this presentation, in my master courses in my master year i have a presentation session called Tokuen, which is a special seminar on computer science and electrical engineering and on the second presentation of my Tokuen, i should present my current progress of my research which I'm um, which I gave a title of compatible course content synchronization model for various elements over the network the previous the previous uh, work we have published it into the conference into the IEEE 10 region conference in Bali And this is the outline of the research. First, I'll go with the introduction. And on the introduction, there is also related work. And then we go to the method, the result, conclusion, conclusion in future work, and supplementary slides. So my field of research is e-learning. For those of you who doesn't know what e-learning is, it is electronic learning, which is the use of electronic devices in the learning and teaching process. Within e-learning itself, there is something called online course, which is the topic that I'm working on. and different from conventional course with online course you can assess a course from anywhere at any time with all you need is a computer device connected to the internet although there is some issue there is still some problem in implementing online course especially in developing country for example, in Indonesia, this is a ICT presentation map in 2012 showing that not all regions have a good internet connection or not have a good telecommunication network. The green parts have a have a good uh, internet connection and the darker parts have a not so good internet connection especially the one in the east where it is a red part the best internet connection is in the capital city Jakarta which is this small green dot and so when we try to implement on an online course in Indonesia planting the server in the capital city only those in near around the capital city can enjoy the quality of online course while other regions might not be able to have good access to the server itself and maybe the eastern parts may not be able to have an access at all may not be able to access the online course at all and so to increase the accessibility instead of implementing centrally on the capital city we implement a distributed learning management system where the people on each region do need to assess the central server but they can assess the server on their local area so giving them a fair accessibility but after that, we need to consider how to effectively distribute the contents 
and distributing this learning content is the core topic of my research and uh, I made this arrow as a dotted line because I want to show to you actually I want to tell you that the distribution of the content is not one time only it's many times and continuous even infinitely and the cause of that is because of the constant revision of the learning contents your professors your lecturers the authors tends to revise their course contents with the noble purpose of education and the problem is every time when the course is revised we need to distribute the content to update the contents on the distributed server and if you see the trend that the course contents uh, became the that the size became larger every time it is revised and if we keep on without any defined method the distribution will be very heavy on the network and so my predecessors which I'll show you who implemented incremental data synchronization on the course content distribution and so on this figure is illustrated that if you already have some part of the course contents or sorry this is a wrong this is the wrong uh, uh, wrong number is supposed to be 8 mm, wait supposed to be 12 but if you already have some part of the course contents we do need to get the whole course contents we just need to get the remaining part the part that we don't have or the revised part only and if we do it this way compared to the previous figure it will be more efficient on the network and so this work was that work was led by my professor professor Usagawa by Afandi Hidayanto Rumbayan there is Ishimura and Chisaki and the journal was published by Dr. Royana and they called their work called Dynamic Synchronization of Learning Contents of the Distributed Learning Management System over Band Limited Network. This was published in IEEE conference and the journal was published in Human Centric Computing Information Scientists is an open journal on Springer. And so this is their model. They implemented on Moodle. On the Moodle table, they create an on the database they create another table called a synchronization table to perform a synchronization. The Moodle table will be first converted into a synchronization table and once both tables are synchronized or the one on the slave side is updated the table the synchronization table will be reconverted back to the Moodle table and ultimately it will update the course contents so in short they perform a directory and database synchronization and every and the solution was already found when uh, this the problem of heavy distribution of learning contents and so if everything is already done you wonder why I make the presentation right now the solution is already there and it's the problem is fixed so on this presentation I present to you a remaining problem which is the previous application only works for Moodle version 1.9 and 2.0 this previous model for an application is limited to one application for one version of LMS 
and if, if the their model this figure there is nothing wrong with the figure but outside the work outside the publication they, they actually they still have problem with the application itself when we when back then when they handle in the director and database they cannot fully synchronize the quiz there's if there are some um, some strange parts or anything that is the synchronization fail and since their application uh, their uh, this application um, modifies the database itself it's still not verified if it's safe or not to actually do this I'm not saying that it's not safe or it's very dangerous to do this thing but there hasn't but they, they haven't made any verification yet if you want to continue this work then you can continue on that work but for me I would like to take this work on a different approach not a different yes a different approach but I would like to take a slightly different path well actually it's not a problem it's very common that whenever the Moodle or the LMS or the an application direct version changes it's very common for Moodle to have to change the directory and database structure with each version and for that we have to write another application although the model is still the same still valid but we need to make an application for that version of LMS so it's actually not a problem but as I said I would like to take a different path a different way because we found a better way to do this that instead of one application for one version of LMS I, I we can make a model which is one application can work for many LMS and not restricted by version so even when the Moodle version changes and if and even on other LMS other than Moodle just one application is enough to actually to actually work for doing a dynamic content synchronization and we published the intro that we work on model by me Fajar Purnama and the professor Dr. Royana and Dr. Lina Wati we call it our sync and our diff implementation on model backup and restore feature for course synchronization over the network in international conference at WWE region 10 symposium Tensim Bali Indonesia 2016 so on this work we on this work where this previous model is facing a compatibility issue it works for version 1.9 but then it's changed the structure changes we need to make an application for 2.0 and then when the version increases we need to make another application again we tackle that issue on this publication and we successfully created a model that one application can work for all version of Moodle and on this work on this presentation my current research progress I would like to understand this introductory work that the objective of this work we would I would like to develop an application that is uh, compatible to all LMS while still efficient on the network as of the previous model and so this is the proposed model the reason why the previous model is facing a uh, is facing a compatibility issue is because that application also handles the directory and the database synchronization well for the handling of directory and database most LMS already have their internal feature we do need to write how to do the database and the directory they already have that feature 
which is an export and import feature of course contents where how it work is they export they can export and import their course contents they can export the course contents into an archive and then import it back to the LMS and this feature they already they already do the handling of the directory and the database so in what I in my uh, perspective we do need to write an application handling the directory and the database but we we should we all we needed to do is just borrow this feature what apply what our application will do is to update this outdated course content archive on the client side into the new one by implementing an incremental by using an incremental data synchronizer and so we did an experiment on our own on my own written course which consists of three topics computer programming computer network penetration testing with which topic consists of four kinds of modules which are materials discussion forums assignments and quizzes and baby and and extended from the previous work we experimented on six LMS, five other LMS other than Moodle, which are Atutor, Camilo, Dokios, Ifran, and Ilias, which each of them have the same structure course. Course structure, sorry. So there are basically uh, generally three steps. The first step is to export the course contents into an archive and then performing an incremental data synchronization on both archive to update the updated one into an into the latest version on the, on our experiment we did we perform four scenario which is without synchronization large content synchronization medium content synchronization and where there is no revision or no update and finally the last general step is to import the synchronized updated archive to the client's LMS to see if the contents on the client is updated or not if this step fails then the other two steps are actually in vain we did that in vain so this step must work for the application to be usable So the first scenario is about synchronization where we retrieve, we download the whole content which is around 21, 29 megabyte. The second scenario is large which is only our self-defined term, only my self-defined term where the client side have only one topic and want to get the other two topics for medium the client have already have two topics and want to get the last topic and the fourth scenario where there is no change there shouldn't be any update but we form we perform the synchronization anyway um, to verify that are uh, that the application should not produce uh, almost should not produce any network traffic at all where well, roughly should not produce but there should be a bit data exchange though and so this is on this demonstration side this is the snapshot of Camelot's course export interface when on the first step we want to export the course contents for example the LMS Camelo have a uh, can export courses have the export and import feature 
Here it is shown that we can export the course contents into a into a dot csv csv dot xls or dot xml type or format and after we export the course we built an application here is written in php very soon i will also improve the html and the javascript we need the application to perform an incremental data synchronization on that exported course content and here it is shown first the first we can first manually you can just pro export the course manually and then upload it on our application and here is a for example a Moodle backup a backup dot mbz which roughly around 16 megabyte and we want to update to the new one which is around 29 or 30 megabyte so on the server side we will click master so it can be as the it can be as the server side which has the latest update here we you can here on my application we can use our diff or a directory based of our diff and then we can update and there is a setting to set this application and stuff hmm. so this is uh our, so this application shows a manual manually update application where we manually uh, upload the archive and we manually import the archive later download time to this update and thing but I already made an application for Moodle that you can do those automatically with just learning the structure of the LMS and then how to automatically export the course contents to this application and importing it back it's possible you probably need to learn the how to do it with each LMS and for the incremental data synchronization we use rdiffdir a directory based rdiff which is based on the rsync algorithm for incremental data synchronization anything may do and I would like to strongly state to you that this is not um, this is not the main or the this is not the main thing of this work what we want to show what we want to present on this work is the model itself for the incremental data synchronization it's very flexible you can instead of using building application which is based on the rsync algorithm you can use google drive you can use git you can use svn or dropbox or any other application that can do incremental data synchronization and probably you just need to modify a bit of the interface so but for this work we use a base we use an rsync algorithm so it works by first on the client side that it will make a signature of the old archive the signature is uh, the signature is they say it is a, like a reference to the old to the archive and on and uh, and this thing the signature of the reference it is a bundle of checksums they contains it co it consists of an old oh no it consists of a weak and a strong checksum the signature will then be sent to the server by using checksum you can search for something about checksum it will be used the signature will be used on its archive on the server 
to calculate the delta or the difference between this between the new archive and the old archive this delta itself is actually a patch so if, um, in our sync algorithm it will first check the weak checksum of each allocation of the file uh, each allocation of the data if, if in the file or archive if it is similar it will use it will check with the strong checksum to verify if it's exactly identical or not if if it's identical then leave it as it is but if but if it's if, but if it's different then it will regard it as a new data and will be put into the delta so other than identi identifying new data in the new archive which one is new it will also check the allocation of which data whether the allocation is the same on the old archive or not if the allocation is still the same then leave it is is if it if we found there is a different allocation or a shift or something it will give an instruction on the delta to move that allow that data allocation to be in the position that is on the new archive and finally and in other words no 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 in other words it will it will also contain an instruction to array to rearrange the data allocation and finally if based on the signature that there exists a data in the old archive but that is not but it doesn't exist in this new archive it will generate an instruction to delete the data and finally once it's done the patch will be returned to the client and be applied to the old archive and as my and as you listen to my long explanation before applying this patch to the old archive will generate an identical archive then updated to the new one identical to the one on the server side and so for our application this is the result of the performing an update um, the previously 16 megabyte of archive is updated to the 30 megabyte of archive the delta is around 15 megabyte if you calculate closely is almost equal to this one minus by this one the signature there is a paper though that gave a calculation uh, an exact calculation of how big the signature should be depending on the file size which is not the which is out of the scope of this work but roughly it's around one megabyte this one is 500 kilobyte though and so the result is that um, it's actually too much to actually f put verification like the success of importing the course content archive to the to the client LMS but you can try this on your own on uh, sorry but I will put the link to my application later you can try this yourself but for our result we successfully imported the course contents back to the client and shows that if the contents have been updated the difference in the network traffic is the it depends on the how much you need to, it needed to update which i will show you on the supplementary slide but for the discussion i made the average network traffic instead so without using without using the the synchron the incremental data synchronization, we would need to get the whole full content 
which is about 21 megabyte or 28 27 year but if we use the incremental data synchronization we get a lower network traffic in other words a better result why because uh, and theoretically or ideally it didn't retrieve the full content but it retrieved only the remaining content that it, the, that the client doesn't have it would only retrieve the revised part and only retrieve the difference and we ideally it should always be the network traffic should always be lower to without using a synchronization although there may be some other extreme cases where this doesn't apply but is out of the scope of this current presentation and when there is no revision or no update on the fourth scenario there should barely any network traffic which is proven correct for this one then we conclude this work we can conclude that this work successfully develop an application that is compatible to the six test LMS while retaining the network efficiency for the future work if you follow this presentation thoroughly you may f you may you may be aware that this work only discuss one side of the course content synchronization which is incremental data synchronization while dynamic content synchronization or course content synchronization is more than just incremental data synchronization there are other such sites which is yet to be discussed which is the data safety privacy and security and maybe other aspects which they are need, needed for the final step of implementation I explain a long presentation to you for talk when I only have 12 minutes for presentation since I'm doing a video I can do I can tell you everything about this presentation and so on this supplementary slide I will show you why I will show you why um, we get this different network traffic and so this is the data okay it's basically on this one so the sub that happened because the size of the course content generated by each LMS are different those that have a rich interface like Moodle Tokyo and Efron tend to generate higher larger course contents while other might not produce so much like a tutor and Efron no no no, no a tutor Camilo and Ilias so what we did was we tried to update 16 to 30 megabyte and 28 to 30 megabyte and it's different right when we update 16 to 30 the difference is around 15 megabyte but this time we want to update to 300 from 300 kilobyte to 30 megabyte the difference is around 13 megabyte itself which is why on this figure shows that the large the the size of the revision is this much is because we want to oh no the a tutor is here this one is Ilias so if we look at Ilias we want to update from 400 to 26 which will result around 26 megabyte but for the others is different for example model from 16 to 30 which is only around 15 megabyte so this is where we get the result is because due to the difference of the 
size of the course content okay and this is the raw data that I produce but that's practically it okay and what else okay there is another supplementary slide there is a far future work so on my master I plan to finish until this much but beyond the master research I will do an initial implementation there may I may do I may cal I may I may uh, reduce the resource costs I may further reduce the network maybe using a better compression and better gilmous increase method I may um, increase the security and its flexibility and I may work on big data on a massive size of gigabyte of data with the various types of data and this work is on the unidirectional synchronization next we want to say we want to do a bidirectional synchronization where the client and the server can actually contribute to the content but this one is only one direction only where the server will just make the content and update on its own and then distribute to the client and the client can only only use but cannot contribute and maybe I will consider a cross platform synchronization between different versions between LMS and finally if I finish all of this I will do a final application tuning for a better interface like on the JavaScript and at HTML maybe I'll make no I will make the application on different file form for different LMS May, the one that I made is for Linux I will make one for Windows as well and of course after that will be a final implementation to see the benefit and contribution and after the final implementation we will do I will do an evaluation of this whole thing and finally that is the real finish of the presentation thank you and do leave a comment and question below if you do have one by the way I use a screen cast to record on Kali Linux thank you